If you're going to create like a vision, a dream of what you want, a new job or whatever, it's a new relationship, a new house, it's going to take you time to go get it because you've got to drag your body through space and it takes time. Yes. When you create from the fifth dimension, you actually are doing the opposite. You're actually collapsing space and time and you're drawing the experience to you. You don't go and get it. <laughs> when there's a vibrational match mm -hmm. with your energy and something in your future and you're creating from the fifth, you're not playing by Newtonian physics any longer. You're playing by quantum, which means now you are drawing your future to you. You're the magnet to mm. your destiny. So things start showing up in your life out of nowhere because you created them from nowhere. Something appears out of nothing because you created it from nothing and it happens in no time because you created it in no time. And so now you're less likely to go and get it. <laughs> you're more likely to, to tune into it and bring it to you. Mm -hmm. So now you're not rushing anywhere to get it. You feel like you understand that there's a different way to do it. Mm. So I'm proud to say mm -hmm. that the people in our community that do this work, they do it every day. You know why? Because they see the magic and they don't want the magic to end. It's and they effortless. Don't, they don't wake up and say, oh God, I gotta create my future today. They're not like that. They're yeah. like, let's go. Yeah. They're excited to do it and the enthusiasm is the energy of creation, right? So, you know, I do watch the news because I wanna be informed, but as uh, for me personally, I never focus on people. I focus on principles. Okay. So when you focus on a principle, you're less likely to put it on a person or a thing. When you focus on principles, people can align with principles yeah. and, and no longer be deceived by people or things. And so I do watch it because I want to be informed and I do think this is a really incredible time to be alive mm. because a new awareness, because of knowledge and information creates a new consciousness, a new consciousness creates a new energy and that new energy is unraveling everything politically, economically, socially, religion, education, journalism, the environment, medicine, everything's coming apart because it should. We're way more powerful than, than all of this and all those things have to be exposed for people to really realize, oh, it's, all, it's always been within me. I, I, I have a great job in, in witnessing human transformation yeah. and being a part of transformation. And we're wired to care for one another. We're wired to serve one another. We're wired to, to, to truly contribute to one another. That's, that's who we are. You know, all of this media and television and war and politics, yeah. it's, it's prejudice is all to create lack of trust and separation, right? So when you witness that kind of transformation, all the lost luggage, all the missed flights, all the late flights, all the challenges we have, None of it matters for that one person who stands up and says, my tumor's gone. That to me, I, made, I, changed, I changed somebody's future. And that person is gonna change other people's future. And one friend of mine said the other day who had brain cancer that just got a clean bill of health. Uh, a West Point graduate, wow. she went to her doctor. You know what her doctor said to her? Now I remember why I got into medicine in the first place. <laughs> She, she changed his life uh, just by saying, and he, he pronounced her, you know, she wasn't going to make it a few times and she never gave up. You never know what you do in choosing to believe in this stuff, who you're going to affect in some future time. And that's what creates community and that kind of emergence of people that share the same energy, the same beliefs, the same thoughts, the same behaviors. That's a new community and you don't, you don't try to fix what's broken, you create something better and everybody leaves there and goes to there. And, and for me, I just, uh, I just want to contribute in some way and make a difference. The formula, of course, is the, is the, the different meditations that we do. Okay. And, and I now know, it's so wild because we've done so many great measurements, that in certain meditations, I can say certain words and all 14 people that are getting their brain scanned will all go into gamma at the same time. They're really? conditioned. Wow. They're conditioned. Huh. Um, so, so the formula is we now know how to get people into that state. And then once they're in that state, uh, now they're accessing from the field. They're connected to something greater. And now it becomes less about changing matter. They don't change matter. That's the illusion. They just change the field. 
And when you change the field, it changes matter. So people are changing their beliefs on how that's done. So the formula then is getting to that point where they get beyond themselves and they're connecting to the consciousness of everybody, of everyone, of everything, of everywhere, every time. That is the oneness field. That is the field. That's yes. where all the information exists. Oh. Now, there's a caveat to this because we've seen this so many times because when you reach that moment, all the things that you thought you wanted, you no longer want because you feel like you mm -hmm. have everything. Mm -hmm. and, Complete. and it's a very, a very unusual feeling because the side effect of that is that you now are less interested in uh, anything outside of you bringing you joy. Uh, yeah. you, it's coming from yeah. within you. That's what you want. And so then imagine like our students, certain people, their oxytocin levels go up 200 or 300 uh, times at the end of a workshop. <laughs> oxytocin is the love chemical. Yes. So imagine having so much love wow. for life. Mm. I mean, oxytocin levels, Lisa, normally go up when a, when a female mammal is bonding with her offspring or in the beginning stages of a relationship uh, uh, and there's intimacy, uh, the, the oxytocin creates monogamy and bonding and stuff. And my, and my colleagues that look at or my research, they say, why are you measuring oxytocin in your workshops? I mean, that's normally, you know, in the honeymoon stage of a relationship. What are you guys doing there? And I say, I want our students to fall in love with their future, fall in love with the divine. You have to, yes. And, and, and yes. my goodness. So then when oxytocin levels go up 200 times, imagine having, feeling so much love, you wouldn't want to trade this feeling for anyone or anything. Imagine this is an important point because what is unconditional love? Isn't it when you just allow people, right? Imagine having right. so much feeling, that consistent feeling. It's measured in their uh, oxytocin levels, their neurotransmitters, their heart coherence, there's, there's different brain systems switched on. You would say, I, I'm not going to give this feeling up for anyone or anything. Yeah. Now, that's the moment you're free. Now, that's the moment where you're less likely to rely on anybody outside of you to bring you love. In fact, you just feel love for, for no reason. If I can get a group of people together and I can give them sound scientific information and science is the contemporary language of mysticism. Mm. Science is what demystifies the mystical. The moment you talk religion or culture or tradition, or tradition you're going to divide an audience because no, someone's going to switch off. Yeah. But when you science, science creates that kind of unification. So every time you learn something new, you know this, you've, you've seen the videos, you make new connections in your brain, right? So. If I'm combining quantum physics with neuroscience, neuroendocrinology, psychoneuroimmunology, epigenetics, whatever, and I'm putting it together in a model for them to understand, they're learning that information. Well, if learning is making new connections, remembering is maintaining them. So if I say to them, turn the person next to you and explain what I just said, if they can't explain it, it's not wired in their brain. So between the two people, they start building a model of understanding, right? And they start to not, I don't want to hear about your past or any other theories, just repeat what I said. So as they begin to fire and wire those circuits, they're installing the neurological hardware in their brain in preparation for an experience. And the more they understand what they're doing and why, the how gets easier. So then if I can set up the conditions in the environment and give them the proper instruction, the people that get their behaviors to match their intentions and their actions equal to their thoughts, they're going to have some type of new experience or transformation. Mm -hmm. So then the transformation then that we measure, we've measured over the years, gives me more information to teach transformation the next time, yeah, right? Yes, yes. So now we just got it down to a little bit more of a, a science. So that first day, yeah, look, I've looked at enough brain scans in real time, and I know this now, that when you analyze your life within some disturbing emotion, you're mm -hmm. going to make your brain worse because mm -hmm. you're thinking in the past. Mm -hmm. When you get that person beyond their analytical mind and beyond those emotions, they're free. They'll have the answer because they're outside the box. They're, now they're free to see it from a different perspective.